So this unit did not quite go as I expected it to. But before I can tell you about that, there's something I want to show you. So these are some old drawings from throughout my life in different points. And even though the style is quite different in a lot of them and they span over a number of years, there's something that's pretty similar throughout all of them. I'm going to give you a second to take a look. Alright, it's the stiff, straight, boring hairstyle that is present in pretty much all of my drawings. So in this unit, I set out to learn how to draw both hair and clothes in two weeks. Looking back, I'm not really sure why I thought that was a good idea, but let me explain what I was thinking. As with the other units, I planned this one out before I had actually started learning how to draw again. And at this point, even though I knew that my characters were lacking variation in style, I didn't really think that I needed to go back and learn the techniques again as badly as I did with faces or anatomy. And so I really thought that because drawing hair was like always my favorite part of drawing characters, all I really needed to do was go and try to diversify my character style in regards of clothes and hair. But I was wrong. On the very first day watching the very first tutorial, I quickly realized that I didn't really know that much about drawing hair. And worse than that, I'm pretty bad at drawing the strands of hair the way that I was seeing them in the tutorials. Curly hair or very short hair in general was very mechanically challenging to me. I just struggled to like move my hand in the direction that I needed to in order to get the appearance that I was going for, which was my biggest issue in this unit, but unfortunately not the only one. Because I found that even drawing straight hair, I didn't really get the effect that I wanted because my hand just did not want to move in different directions. All of the hairstyles that I've drawn in the past, you may have noticed, have kind of like very pointed ends. They don't have that like fluffiness that hair tends to have. But the thing is that especially because I drew these characters on paper in a particular style, I don't really think it looked bad in that very quick unfinished sketch that I was doing for a very long, long time. But of course, the whole reason why I'm doing this series is because I want to go beyond that and beyond my current habits and I really want to improve my character drawing and especially improve my digital drawing skills which my current drawing habits really don't lend themselves to that goal. And I really underestimated what it would be to change those habits before I actually started drawing. Another mistake that I made is that when I started this unit, I didn't practice hair drawing right away because to be quite honest with you, after that first tutorial, I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed and discouraged by the disconnect between what I was seeing in the tutorial versus my inability to follow along with my sketchbook effectively. But once I did start practicing, it started to become really apparent that I was a little in over my head on this unit. And there was no way that I was going to be able to make the progress that I was aiming for while also drawing clothes in the span of two weeks. And though I did start learning a little bit about drawing clothes in this unit, by the second week, it became very obvious that I needed to just take that element out of this unit and just focus on hair. And in the future, I do plan to have a unit dedicated to just clothes 
and nothing else. But because I had originally split my time between drawing hair and clothes, I did not get as much practice in drawing hair as I think I really should have. In a similar vein, I came into this unit kind of lacking the enthusiasm that I think I needed in order to give it a proper go. I am going to make another video to address this specific issue very soon, but I have been approaching a little bit of a block with this series. However, I also think I know where it's coming from, and so I'm planning on making some adjustments that will help it to run smoother and go better and just be more pleasant experience overall. And I do want to continue making episodes, but just without losing that enthusiasm for them, because I want them to be good, and I feel like if I'm just lacking the energy, they are not going to be good. However, I do think that this unit also kind of highlighted some of the oversights that I had originally made, so maybe it was a good thing that I went through all this before making those changes. All that being said, you might be wondering what actually did happen in this unit. Well, I'll tell you. As I said before, I did not get in as much practice as I really think I should have in order to give this unit a proper chance. However, I do think I made just a little bit of progress because by the end of this unit, I was just starting to kind of get the hang of drawing curlier, curvier lines in regards to hair. Now, I wouldn't call any of the hair I drew in this unit good, but I think I've managed to break a little bit of the habit that I've had for the past 10 years. So I guess I would say that this unit had a little bit more to do with unlearning art than relearning art, and I guess in a way we can call that a little bit of a silver lining. There were a couple of drawing exercises that I did in this unit though. I started with one that was suggested in the first tutorial I watched, which was from Pipus Art, and she said that she recommends just studying different hair types and kind of making like your own chart of those hair types and drawing the strands. And of course, this is where I started to realize that I was really having difficulty getting those lines down. On paper with a tutorial, it was already a bit of a challenge, but I was like, you know, it's fine. Once I get to practicing drawing on my own and I'm not trying to follow along quickly with a tutorial, it'll be okay. But it was not. And generally I found this pretty hard and I was getting pretty lost on how to draw the hair types. I also at one point made myself a very basic and to be quite honest, not very good template of heads to practice drawing hairstyles on. And I do just wanna know, I'm not having so much of an issue drawing heads traditionally, but when I'm drawing them digitally, especially at different angles, I am finding it a little bit challenging. But for the hair, I just went on Pinterest and chose a few different references to copy their hairstyles and try to draw them at different angles on this template. And that went okay, but I did have some issues, especially with the really curly hairstyles that I was trying to mimic. And so this is when at the end of the unit, I decided to do a tracing exercise because I figured it might actually simplify that for me because I was just finding that when I was looking at the more curly hairstyles and seeing all of the curls on these girls' heads and they're so overwhelming <laughs> when you're trying to draw them for like the first time and looking at the reference and then trying to draw it separately was just as I said, a little overwhelming and a little discouraging. So I just thought if I traced them directly onto the photos, it would kind of help just get the hand movements down and not worry so much about placement. And I actually do think that that tracing exercise was probably the most helpful thing I did because this is when I started to see just like a little bit of a turnaround. And another thing you may have noticed at this point is that I actually practiced all of this 
digitally. And this is because I've recently learned through a little bit of research that the reason why sometimes it can be harder to draw digitally, even if you're okay at it traditionally, is just because the way that your pen kind of makes contact with the tablet is different texturally than on paper. And in a way, to be able to draw digitally, you kind of have to relearn how to move the pen. But that was actually a really interesting and encouraging tip, so I was pretty glad to learn it. And I thought that maybe if I focused on doing these exercises more digitally, then I could do that a little bit faster. As for the assignment that I gave myself for this unit, obviously I did not end up doing what I had planned from the very beginning. And it's kind of a shame because my original plan was to take an old character that I used to draw and kind of give it like a makeover a couple different times and give it different hair and different clothes um, that kind of suit the character more. And this would have been a really fun idea, but by the time I got to the end of the unit, it was pretty clear that I was not like really equipped to do this assignment. I decided to change it instead to just drawing like three heads with three different hairstyles at different angles and giving it like a little bit of a rough color in. And I did attempt this, but to be honest, I don't really think I was super well equipped to do this by the end of the unit either. I picked a few models off Pinterest and then made like basic sketches of their heads at different angles and then chose a few hairstyles off Pinterest that were at pretty much the same angles as those pictures. Though in retrospect, maybe I should have actually just chosen the hairstyle pictures first and tried to replicate them, face and hair, but by that point it was already done. So I think it turned out okay, but not good. Again, I think this is mostly just because I'm so set on trying to draw hair the way that I have been drawing it this whole time. Even though I did see a little bit of progress with doing it differently. And funnily enough, I actually do think that the curly hair looks better than the straight hair and maybe the short one is better than both of them. I'm not totally sure to be honest. But to address the elephant in the room, I did give these drawings like this very basic shading, but I did not spend very long on it. I just kind of wanted to indicate where the light would hit the hair and like where the shadows might be, especially on the curly hairstyle and to do this I did use the photos as a reference for that. I know it's not good though so please don't come for me but if you remove the lines from the hairstyle it actually almost kind of looks digitally painted so it's not like the worst thing in the world but I again I know it's not like good but the reason why I didn't spend a lot of time on this is because I do have a couple of units in the future on color and shading and so I kind of want to approach shading the hair the way that I would now so that in the future I can look back and do a better job of it after learning a bit more. But between practicing drawing hair and doing that assignment, I noticed that there was a question that kept coming up inside my own head. That was first about style because I'm aware that as my style changes, the way that I draw hair might change, which actually led me to another question, which was when it comes to rendering, am I going to prefer to still draw hair or am I going to do more of like painted hair? Because of course that depends on my overall style and if I lean more towards doing like digital paintings or digital drawings or kind of like combining the two somehow. And I do kind of expect I might lean a bit more towards the painting side just because in general, in traditional art, painting is a little bit more of my thing. That's what I have a little bit more experience with and that I think I'm a little bit better at. But that will be something to kind of look back on towards the end of the series and see what happened. But either way, I actually think it's still really important to get the drawing skills down anyway. So even if I don't end up 
drawing hair with the same detail that I'm trying to achieve in this unit. I do still want to train my hand to be better at drawing hair than before. So what did I learn in this unit? Well, for one, drawing hair is actually a lot harder than it looks. And that's especially true if you've had the same habit for like a decade of your life. Second, unlearning how to draw sometimes can actually be really challenging, which is why I kind of wish that when I was like 12 years old, I would have just confronted my fear of drawing curls because by now, then I would have been better at it, but can't change the past. So I guess all I can really do now is just keep practicing and just keep trying. And honestly, as of me sitting down here right now, I have actually taken a bit of time to just do some like line drawing exercises in all different ways to try to kind of break those habits again. So it's something I'm working on and hopefully in the future I can come back to this unit. I do want to do it again and try to redeem myself for what happened. But if you made it this far, thanks for sticking around and I'm sorry this unit did not have the same kind of like progress forward focus that I was hoping it would have in the very beginning and I honestly thought it was just going to be a lot more fun and lighthearted and I think that because I thought this would be easier it actually ended up feeling a lot harder than the things that I thought would be more difficult because for those units I was able to like accept the fact that I would be learning something from beginning again and it would be challenging but in this unit, I was not really expecting to have to make those big changes. So it just totally changed the way that I was approaching it. I've been hearing in the comments from some of you who are on the same boat as me, where you're like trying to learn character drawing or learn it again. And so if that's you, um, I hope you take this as a guide for what not to do when you're drawing hair, but if this is your very first episode of this series, I do have some other episodes that are a lot more successful and I'm going to leave you with the playlist for those episodes in case you want to take a little look and have a bit of a better time. But as always, thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.